Hey everybody, we're going to go over the notes for 7-1 and inside of these notes we're going to talk about what it means to have a zero and what it means to have a negative exponent. Um, you can see the common core standards are listed and also I thought it would be good to show you that this will be on the keystones in module one um, and you can see that we have to be able to apply this what you're about to learn. Uh, so I have my calculator pulled up on the right if you want to have yours pulled up as well. Here are the main concepts, okay? So if you have a zero exponent, so you have a base, the base would be four, you have an exponent of zero, it will always equal one, okay? And that is the rule. Zero as an exponent will always be one. Notice if you have negative three, the parentheses are needed for a negative. To a zero power, it would be one. Let's just make a special note right here that if you had negative three to the zero power, the answer would actually be negative one because the negative was not included with the zero power. All right, next, the main concept, negative x. So we did zero, now negative. Negative exponent means he is not happy where he is. So the seven is not happy, so we put him on the bottom. Notice the exponent turns positive. So if you did seven to the third power, let's fully evaluate that, seven to the third power, you would have one over 343. The same thing will happen, whether it's negative or positive. So if the negative is included in parentheses, to make the exponent, you can't ever answer with a negative exponent. So to make the exponent positive, it needs to go under the one, or if it was on the bottom, it has to move to the top. And then you would evaluate negative five to the second power. So if you ever wanted to try your calculator, you definitely could, you would get a positive 25, because negative five and negative five. So anytime you have a negative exponent, let's also make one more special note. If for some reason you had a negative exponent on the denominator, it's not happy, it would need to move. So this would actually, instead of being in the denominator, that three would be in the numerator and it would have a positive two with it like that. So your answer would be positive nine. Now it's time to go ahead and try a few of these and we'll throw variables in with it. All right, so we're gonna do the entire left-hand side, all the A's, and then I'm gonna do all the B's. So let's look at example 1A, five to the negative two power. Well, because this is technically over one, what we're gonna do is throw that guy on the bottom, and we're gonna have one over five to the positive two power. Notice how it becomes positive when you move it, which is one over 25, because five squared. All right, let's move to the next one four to the negative one power. So remember currently that is a fraction, you just don't see it. So that's gonna become one over four to the positive one power and four to the positive one power is just four. Let's move to two B, or excuse me, three B, or three A, whoo. Um, so we have one, oh, that's kind of silly, isn't it? To the negative 71 power. So the negative says, hey, move me to the denominator, or if it was in the denominator, move me to the top. So this one, this, this blue one that I'm highlighting, would have a positive 71, and one to any power is just one. Your final answer is just one altogether. All right, now we're gonna test out this zero exponent. Anything to the zero power is just a big fat one as a final answer. And you can check that on your calculator if you ever, you know, there's no reason you can't check if you have a calculator provided to you. Uh, four to the zero power is just one. Let's check out five A. So I got my negative exponent that has to be deal dealt with, make it positive on the bottom. So it's just one over five. And now we have 80 to the zero power. Well, anything to the zero power is just final answer of one. And now again, we have a negative exponent. We're gonna make it positive by putting it on the denominator. And three to the third power is 27. And if you are not sure, you can always type that in your calculator to prove that it is. Okay, let's take a look at, we'll deal with those ones in a little bit. Let's go do the variable. So let's go back up to uh, the top page, 1b. So here we have 6x to the 0 power. So what I need you to understand is the 6 is just chilling. The x has the 0 power, so that's what turns into 1. So essentially we have 6 times 1, which is 6. Ooh, look at 2b. So this 1 to the 7th is 1 to the 7th power, which is just 1. This guy needs to move to a denominator and become positive, and this guy turns into a 1. So essentially on the top, I have one times one, which is just one, and the bottom, x to the positive two. Let's check out three b. All right, so we gotta do the five to the negative three, 
which is 1 over 5 to the positive 3. x to the 6 is normal, not negative or 0, so he just drops down. He is not happy, so he's got to, ch got to go down to the bottom to become positive. I'm just going to write the word move. And this little guy ends up just being a big fat 1. So on the top, I end with 1 times x to the 6 times 1, which is just x to the 6. And on the bottom, 5 to the third power is 125. You can use your calculator like I just did. And then y to the third power. All right, let's check out the next one down. So we're going to do the 3. So we'll do 3 squared. 3 squared is just a regular 9. Uh-oh, this one's negative. So he says, put me on the bottom and make me positive. And then the b to the fifth is just normal. So let's just keep him where he was. And then this guy is not happy. So he's got to move. Anybody who has a negative exponent needs to move to the other part to become positive. And let's see, the top is just done. It's a positive 9 with a b to the fifth. The bottom, I'm going to go ahead and evaluate 4 to the second power, which is 16. And I'll just do 16 with my x squared. Let's go down to 5b. So 5 to the 0 power is just a big old 1. Remember, anything to the 0 power. b to the 6 is just a normal exponent with a base. c the 10 needs to move. We're going to put him in the denominator. And then 6 to the negative 1 also needs to move. So we'll do it 6 to the positive 1 on the bottom. Now the top is just normal. 1 times b to the 6 is b to the 6. And then on the bottom, 6 to the first power, if you're not sure, 6 to the first power is just 6. And then the c10, writing it in standard form, should go next. Let's take a look at 6b. So we have 4 to the 1 power. 4 to the 1 power is just 4. 5 to the second power, well, that's just normal. Uh, it doesn't need to move, so I, I could type that in my calculator now if I wanted to. That's just 25. Oh, this one is not normal. Don't type this on your calculator. Move it first and put it on the bottom. So we'll do 6 to the positive 2 bot on the bottom. Let's see. This one's normal, m to the fifth, the base of m. Oh, and this one needs to move, so we'll put n to the positive 7 on the bottom. So the top is a little more difficult than it has been. We have to do 4 times 25. Well, 4 times 25 is 100, and I can prove that over here in case you're struggling. Here's your m to the fifth. And then on the bottom, we have 6 to the second, which is 36. And you can take a look at the calculator if you weren't sure, n to the seventh. All right, so we're taking care of zeros, and we're moving things that were negative exponents. So here we have 6 to the negative 2. He needs to move. Don't don't type it in your calculator, move it first to make it a positive 2. Oh, he needs to move, so here he is, positive 5. That was a silly, let me, that positive sign was kind of gross. And here's that y to the 4th, he just stays put. So anything that had a negative exponent needs to move. The top is just y to the 4th, it's nothing fancy. Let's see, on the bottom I have 6 squared, so that's like a number, so I can type it in my calculator for 36. And the x to the 5th is a variable, so he stays put. Let me take a look at what we have next going on. So we did it with just regular numbers and variables. Now it's time to apply it um, to working with fractions and decimals. So let's take a look at this one. Hmm. So the first thing I would encourage you to do is, and I'm starting to think how, what the best thing would be. Well, let's just stay consistent. Let's put it on the bottom and make it positive. Now, let's go ahead and keep the one and put it in the calculator to the third power. That's really weird, right? And I'm hoping maybe there's somebody who remembers that really weird rule that this is not allowed. You can't have a fraction and a decimal. So because we have our calculators available, why not utilize them and like change it to a reduced fraction like this? There's a different way to handle this problem. So that ends up being very odd. <laughs> there's a different way to handle this problem. Um, I could have made it a fraction at the beginning and then applied my three, but I think that was just better. Ooh, look at this one. So this time we have an entire fraction to a negative power. So what we're going to do first, okay, we are going to flip the fraction and make it positive. So take a look at how those two relate. You flip the fraction and make it positive. Now what we have is 5 squared and 7 squared. Well, 5 squared is 25 and 7 squared is 49. And that does not reduce. 
Let's take a look at 3a. Ooh. Well, I love it when, did you notice I don't have a ton of one is to the zero power ants? Because hopefully they're not too bad. The whole answer is just one. <laughs> That's it. That's all done. Well, let's try this one again. Very similar, right? So we have a negative exponent, which tells me, well, I got to flip that fraction and I change it to a positive. So that's going to give me 3 to the third power and 7 to the third power. Well, I know 3 to the third power is 27, and I will prove it here. And 7 to the third power, while I think I know it, it's probably safer for me to use the calculator to get 343. And those do not reduce. Tempting, but no. All right, let's do those. How many more is that, guys? We only got four more. We can definitely punch all those out. All right, 8 to the negative 1. This is no good. This needs to move. Hmm, so where does it move? It moves to the denominator with a positive exponent. What's in the numerator? A 1. And 8 to the positive 1 power is just 8. And you can type that on your calculator if you're not sure. 2 to the negative 4 power. So I need to move this. So it's going to be 1 over 2 to the positive 4 power. And if you don't know what 2 to the positive 4 power is, you can use your calculator to get 16. And just, hey, as a reminder from previous grades, it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. I mean, it's not like I'm making up math in your calculator. That's just what's happening. All right, two more. Ooh. Only one more. I'm going to change this problem because I didn't like how it came out. So let's just try that, that negative. Let's do negative 2 to the 0 power on this one, okay? I'll change your notes so like it doesn't look like anything weird happened there. So just be careful on this one. The only thing that has the 0 power is the 2, and that's what becomes a 1. 2 to the 0 power is 1. But you see this negative sign? It has to attach itself. So I'm going to draw an arrow. It wasn't in parentheses, okay? It wasn't in parentheses, so it doesn't get to go away. And that is how you handle negative exponents and zero exponents. Take um, And go ahead, if you want to, download your homework. If, if you're this is before class, and give it a shot, and feel free to ask questions.